reading to you from Matthew, the ninth chapter, and the 36th verse. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist, Cecil Mo, and as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 51 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Then one year later, God called me to preach, and I've been sharing Jesus ever since. I've been a director of three rescue missions. I've pastored two churches, and I've been on radio for, radio for over 35 years. And you know how I got started in radio? A dear friend of mine came to my house one night and said, Cecil, I'd like to put you on the radio I said, you know I'm not that good a preacher. And he said, well, that's not the point. I know you talk about Jesus. Well, that man's in heaven now, but I'm sure glad he had a vision because we've been able to speak to millions of people over the years, 35 some years of preaching. And it's a joy to be able to come on the broadcast and just let my hair down and open my heart and share Jesus. Well, listen, I'll be with you for 29 minutes. Won't you kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, pour you a cup of hot coffee or a glass of iced tea. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? Today, I'd like to speak on a subject that uh, no Christian likes to hear about. No, I'm not going to preach on sin, although what I'm going to speak about is sinfulness, and that's selfishness. You know, there's just no place in God's work for selfish people. You say, come on, Cecil, come on, there's everybody selfish. Well, we're all a little selfish, I'll have to admit that. But what is selfishness, what does it mean? It's a state of being overly concerned with oneself or he's an egotism. Now, if you want to know something about selfishness, all you have to do is open God's Word. You know, that's what I like about the Bible. It just flat out tells us uh, how to live, how to die, how to give, how to go, how to tell. It's all in the book. But, you know... We don't read stuff like that. Have you ever done this, beloved? Have you ever opened the Bible and you were reading a subject and it was something that you're guilty of? Isn't it funny how you skip over that and go to something else? Because we don't want to know that we're wrong. In Proverbs eleven twenty six, it said, He that withholdeth uh, corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. You know, hoarding is a sin, and you'd be surprised at the Christians who are guilty of hoarding. If you were told you were not going to be able to buy much sugar next week, you'd probably go out and buy 20 pounds and stash it. That's the way people live, but that's not the way the Bible supposed to says we're supposed to do it. It tells us in Isaiah 5, 8, Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Beloved, did you know something? Years and years ago, where I was a little boy in Oregon, there was lots and lots of wheat farms, and uh, they were maybe not very large, maybe a couple hundred acres, but you know, uh, it got so they couldn't make it on 200 acres, so the big boys, the rich guys, come in, and they buy these fields up. And pretty soon, did you know there's very few uh, small dairy farmers anymore? No. They, uh, they, and, of course, it's a government. Uh, they make so many uh, things that you have to do. You have to have a milk house. You have to have things uh, to uh, pump the milk back into the, the milk house and all this and that. 
But people don't realize that this is happening to us today. People are getting more and more richer and richer. Now, look at the oil companies. Sure, we're all upset about this oil. And boy, I am too, because it's really hurting me. Uh, but uh, look at now, there's there's only about four or five uh, big companies. The government let them do it. And now we're paying the price. There's no competition. So they can charge us whatever they want. I don't know the ramifications of all this. I'm, I'm not that bright. All I know that when I go down and fill my van up, it costs me about 50, 60 bucks. And it used to cost me $20. And it's hurting our ministries. I mean, not mine, but all ministries are being hurt by these gas prices. Well, I don't know what they're going to do about it, but I hope they do something about it. Selfishness actually caused disregard of the rights of others. In Ezekiel 34, 18, Seemeth a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. It just seems a small thing, it says, that you eat up all the good pasture. Hey, you know an old cow or an old horse or an old mule do the same thing. You go over here and uh, you see him sticking his neck through the fence to the neighbors. The grass is a little bit greener over there and just a little bit more tender. Even the animals fall for that jive. Well, when we're selfish, we also neglect the needy, the suffering. And Jesus made it very plain in Matthew 25, 43. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Oh, dear friend, now let me get to that prison situation. Oh, 25, 30 years now I've been going to prisons all over the United States including San Quentin. And I want you to know there's men there and, and women in these prisons that their families have turned their back on them and will not go see them because they're, they did a terrible sin. Now they're in prison. Yes, friends, if you do the crime, you do the time. I'm not a bleeding heart. I don't get me wrong. If they did their, if they did a crime, then they have to do the time. But I tell you something. Jesus said I was in prison and you didn't even visit me. And he said I was a stranger, and you took me not in, and naked, and you clothed me not. Oh, friends, I remember one time when I was a director of the rescue mission in Grand Forks, North Dakota. This is quite humorous. This lady came into my office and she said, I thought this was a Christian organization. I said, ma'am, it is. I said, why, why are you questioning it? Well, she said, I'll tell you what. I'm very poor, and my son is going to school, and we can't afford to buy a music instrument for him. And so uh, you got musical instruments in there for sale. We had a store similar to the Salvation Army uh, and all that. Well, anyway, we had instruments and stuff. And I said, ma'am, do me a favor. Is your son with you now? She says, no. I said, would you bring him in tomorrow? I'd like to visit with the little fellow. So they brought, she brought her little boy in there, and I asked her to leave the room, and I want to talk to him. And the sweetest little fellow. And I said to him, I said, uh, you, you want to learn to play the clarinet? Oh, yes, yes, I do. I said, if you had a clarinet, what would you do? Oh, he said, I'd practice, and I'd practice, and I'd play in the band. Well, I said, here, you can have it. And the little boy's eyes got just as big as a saucer. And his mother came in. I said, you see, we are a Christian organization. And I don't know what she thought, but uh, I hope she I hope she realized that just because you're poor does not mean that people got to give you things. But it sure is nice to open your heart to those people who are without. You know, at Christmas time, my ministry, we give out uh, tons of groceries at Christmas time to inmates, families and needy families from all walks of life. 
And I don't think there's anything in the more in, the, in, in my life that's more rewarding than going into a home with three or four little kitties and a and a daddy uh, uh, who's in jail and his and his wife's there and who they suffer just as much as the inmate do. You know that, don't you? Sure, they do. And we take groceries in Turkey, and we take them about three or four boxes of groceries, and their little eyes would light up. But, it, oh, it did something in my heart. The Bible said, He that uh, giveth unto the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and the Lord will repay. Now, I recall one time I invited this lady to a revival meeting, and she didn't. She was belong to a Catholic church, and she said, "Well, we don't go to your Protestant church." I said, "Okay," but uh, I said the invitation's there if you want to come. Well, about two weeks later, I got a letter. I mean, I got a phone call from my neighbor who uh, was a neighbor to this lady, and uh, she said, "Cecil, they're they're starving to death. Their husband's an alcoholic, and they have no food, no uh, clothing, and nothing that." And they're trying to get the Catholic Church to get to them, and the Catholic Church has so far has not helped them out. Well, and I'm not saying that to put down the Catholic Church, but anyway, this particular priest was not interested in that poor family. So my wife and I, we went down and bought $35 worth of groceries, and boy, Cato, $35 worth of groceries back in the 50s was a pretty good bunch of groceries. And we knocked on the door, and she came to the door and said, I told you I was not interested in going to your church. I said, ma'am, this hasn't got one blessed thing to do with my church. This comes from my wife and myself. We've been poor and needy over the years, and we want to share our loaf with you. Oh, she j and we even took candy for the little children. And about uh, three or four days later, she called my neighbor and said she'd like to visit with me and my wife. So we went to their house, and uh, so she, we talked a while, and she said, you know, I wished I had the faith that you and your wife have. I said, our faith is in Jesus. I said, but you know what I do? Do you know whether you're going to heaven when you die? And she said, oh, absolutely, I do not know. I said, you can know. I told her the scripture, First John five thirteen. I said, you know what I do after we leave? Why don't you go in your room? Shut the light off, kneel beside your bed, and say, Lord, I don't know where I'm going when I die, and l let's see what the Lord does. That night she accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. Friends, I never told her to leave the Catholic Church. I never tell you where to go to church. I want the Holy Spirit to, sh to lead you where you're supposed to go. Well, friends, listen. If you have a selfish streak in your heart, why don't you ask the Lord to help you with it? You say, but Cecil, we barely have enough to get by ourselves. Well, maybe if you open up your heart to some poor needy family, you just might be surprised what the Lord will do. You've got a rescue mission over there in almost every city that we broadcast in. And let me tell you what, they do a great work. Back them up, support them, help the mission as much as you can. Give them food, groceries, and, and, and clothing, and you'd be surprised what a blessing that would be to you. Now, let me ask you, friend, are you, have you ever given to somebody poor? And I know a, a great evangelist, a healing evangelist, who's building a $7 million home in California. Now, if that man's right with God, then this book is all wrong. Nobody can do that. No preacher can do that. But they do. I don't have my hand out, dear friends. Jesus has his hand out. And he says, come unto me, all your labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Well, let me ask you, friend. You say, well, Cecil, I don't even know Jesus tonight. Would you like to know him? Well, here's what you got to do. You got to confess that you're a sinner. You got to open your heart. Invite him in. And here's a prayer that will change your life. But, oh, beloved, please don't pray this if you don't mean it. And here's how the prayer goes. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And, and I thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name. Listen, 
I'd love to talk to you. If, if, you know, I've got a mailing address, Cecil Moe, Post Office Box 745, Littleton, Colorado, 80120. Friends, let me know. Uh, let me know so your number. I'd like to call you and talk to you if you want to talk to me. There's no charge. And all oh, friends, I won't sit down and write and ask you for money. I'm not here to ask for money. I'm here to help people spiritually if I possibly can. So drop me a line so we can get a hold of you. An alcoholic, please call me. I'm a converted alcoholic. Been sober 51 years. I'm waiting for your letter.